Hey guys, it's Stephanie here for our daily Disney devotional. Hi babe. And this is written by Albert Thweet and today is number nine, which is called Prince Charming Regal Carousel. Now that we've ridden Dumbo, let's stay in Fantasyland and move around to the other attractions here, starting with Prince Charming Regal Carousel. We usually just call it the carousel, but officially it does have a long fancy name. Now I would never ride this next in real life. <laughs> That's true. The carousel tends to be one of those rides you can avoid until later in the day or altogether if you've ridden it before. For a first timer, especially the little ones, it's worth a ride. It's another classic with an important history which is why I have gone with it now. It is the first ride that you come to once you go through Cinderella's castle. It is a prominent place in Fantasyland and is a sentimental favorite of many. There are several fun facts about this carousel. It is the oldest ride at Walt Disney World having originally been built in 1917. Walt Disney himself purchased it in 1967 and had it refurbished for Disney World. For installation, Roy Disney noticed it was off center from the castle and it was moved eight inches over. Oh my goodness, who does that remind you of? That's something that my husband would want to do is take a tape measure and measure it and make sure it's exactly center. Okay. It is real gold in the decoration of the horses and 2,325 lights on the carousel. Finally, while it was never been officially confirmed, most cast members agree that Cinderella herself has a horse on the carousel. It is the second row of horses and it has a golden bow on its tail. That leads me to an important thought. Do you have a golden bow on your tail? I do not. You may think it's a weird question and you'd be right, but think about the following. There are 90 horses in all on that carousel, but only one has a golden bow. There's only one that stands out as belonging to Cinderella. If that bow wasn't there, it would just blend in with the other 89 and we would never know which one belonged to the famous princess. So maybe a better question for you is, how do you stand out? The Bible makes it pretty clear that we are called to be different. We are called to stand out in the crowd. Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. We are clearly told not to blend in. John gets even more direct when he quotes Jesus as saying, because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world will hate you. That's John 15, 17, excuse me, 15, 19. That may sound harsh and we may not want the world to hate us, but if we are truly living like we are supposed to, Christ tells us how it should be. The world should see us and know that we are different. They should see the golden bow on our tail and know that we belong to someone special. And we don't know and we don't care how that means we are treated. So, look for that special horse next time you ride. See if you can find that golden bow and even be lucky enough to ride Cinderella's horse. More importantly, when you see it, remember to stand out among the crowds in this world. Be different. Be weird. Be unlike the world because that's what we're told to do. Let the world see Christ in you and know that you're different because one day we won't be different from those around us. All the golden bows will be together in heaven where we won't stand out anymore. And what an awesome day that will be.